Hi and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. Prosomal abnormality or the aneuploidy lead to the birth defect which are a major cause of perinatal death and the infant death. And the babies that survive often have developmental delays and intellectual disabilities. Effective screening method for the major aneuploidies such as Down syndrome and Edward syndrome and the others are available right in the first trimester of pregnancy. This video will make you understand what is screening, what screening tests do we employ, at what time period in the first trimester you conduct these screenings and finally how to interpret its results. So a screening test basically means that we screen whole of the population. For example, we have pregnant female. All the low risk pregnant female undergo the screening method and this screening test that we employ, this test has to be non-invasive, has to be done early in pregnancy and should be affordable. So they go undergo this screening test and this screening test has a high detection rate and a low false positive rate so that we can identify the women that are at an increased risk or increased susceptibility for a specific disorder and when we identify from this whole low risk population we identify some patients that are actually having the risk those patients they undergo further a diagnostic test the examples of the screening test include for the first trimester screening if we say it includes an ultrasonography. The ultrasonography will tell you about the nuchal translucency or NT as we say. Or it can include the maternal serum analytes such as beta HCG and PAVE. Now coming on to the diagnostic test. Now we have screened all our pregnant female and we have found the patients with the high risk. These high risk patients have to undergo a diagnostic test to confirm the actual presence of any aneuploidy or chromosomal abnormality in the fetus. So these tests include chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis or fetal blood sampling. It has been a long time since those screening methods are available to us. So since 2007, ACOG recommends that all pregnant women should undergo the screening and the screening should be offered early in pregnancy in the very first perinatal visit irrespective of her maternal age. So whether the pregnant female is in high risk category or the low risk category, she should undergo a screening. Some high risk factors of the patients such as the patients that had a history of aneuploidy or have family histories of aneuploidy and patients with infections such as especially the torch group, patient with a harmful substance intake or on a drug intake that is contraindicated in pregnancy with advanced maternal age, the patients that are obese, first trimester screening includes doing an ultrasonography which shows the fetus nuchal translucency and the nasal bone and we also conduct a maternal serum analysis which will tell you the free serum beta and HCG and the pathway levels. On the ultrasonography we measure the nuchal translucency which is basically measuring the maximum thickness of subcutaneous tissue present between the skin and the soft tissue over the spine at the back of the neck. So the normal NT or the nuchal translucency is taken as 3 mm or less than 99th percentile. Increased nuchal translucency is as such not a fetal abnormality but it signifies that the fetus is at increased risk of aneuploidies, genetic syndromes or birth defects or especially the cardiac defects. If the NT is more than 3 mm or more than the 99th percentile, we can consider the patient for a targeted sonography to find out other congenital anomalies or we can go for a fetal echocardiography or we can suggest the patient to go for a cell-free DNA screening or NIPT. But if the NT is more than 3.5 mm, then the fetal echocardiography is definitely recommended. See, the first trimester sonography can detect the major fetal anomalies as the highest 60%, especially for the abdominal wall defects, the cardiac anomalies, or the CNS abnormalities, such as the NN caffeine. Now, coming on to the maternal serum analysis, which is done for the serum free beta HCG levels and the PAP A levels, which is pregnancy associated plasma protein A. Both these markers are measured in international units. But these international units need to be converted to MOMs, which are multiple of medians. Basically, MOMs means 
that how far an individual varies from the median range. The serum beta HCG level and the serum PAPI levels, they vary in an individual depending upon her factors such as her maternal age, maternal weight, gestational age, the ethnicity and also on the type of assay being performed so that we can standardize and consider all those individual risk factors and then compare the value that we get with the other individual. So here you can see a graph. Uh, on the vertical axis I have proportion of individuals and on the horizontal axis I have maternal serum beta HCG level mentioned in the M1. The red curve is of the unaffected individuals and the blue curve is for the Down syndrome patient. So um, this beta HCG level, the normal unaffected fetuses, they have a peak at around 1 M1. So if the report of the patient mentions uh, the MOM to be around 1, it is more likely going to have a chance of an unaffected fetus. But if we uh, are having a report that mentions 2.5 mm, the chances of Down syndrome patient increases. See, the proportion of patients at 2.5 mm having a Down syndrome is much higher than the proportion of cases that have a normal fetus at 2.5 mm. PAPA, that is the pregnancy associated plasma protein A levels are decreased in all aneuploidies. So, we do this uh, PAPA level best it is done at 10 weeks. Uh, we cannot do these PAPA levels later on in the pregnancy or in the second trimester of pregnancy because the difference between the uh, difference between the levels of PAPA level of a normal fetus and the aneuploidy fetus are minimal as the pregnancy progresses. So it is best done at 10 weeks of gestation where you can uh, where there is a lot of difference between the aneuploid fetus and the normal fetus. Regarding the timing when should we conduct this uh, screening in the first trimester. See first trimester is first 13 weeks. So in those weeks uh, that is from the 11 weeks to 13 weeks 6 days that is the best time when we can conduct this screening that is we can go for the ultrasonography for the uh, nuchal translucency and the nasal bone plus uh, the serum markers that is the free beta HCG levels and the PAPI levels. Now the PAPI levels are best at 10 weeks and the serum beta HCG level are best at the 13 weeks but it is uh, very difficult to uh, call the patient two times for a similar analysis so uh, we go for somewhere in between the 12 weeks gestation for both these dual markers and the NB and B scatter coming on to the benefits of screening. See, it is early and a non-invasive procedure. It reduces the number of invasive procedure in the low-risk pregnancies such as the amniocentesis CVS is not just done because she is having an advanced maternal age. In case she is a low-risk patient, we do not need to go for amniocentesis or CVS directly. The benefit of screening, the first trimester screening, is not just restricted to the identification of aneuploidies or the anomalies. It is also very beneficial to identify the individuals at a very early stage for preeclampsia and the FGR. See, if you combine this first trimester screening with the maternal history plus her mean arterial blood pressure and the uterine artery pulsatility index which is seen on the Doppler studies, of the ultrasonography, you can have a risk assessment for the preeclampsia and the FGR. So in the very first trimester, you can see which patients are at a high risk for developing these diseases which are in later second or the third trimester and you can do an early intervention in these. You can also act as a dating scan if the patient did not have a scan prior to it. Uh, basically the dating scan is between the 9th to 11th week. And if the patient had missed that uh, scan, this can act as a dating scan. Nuchal translucency is very good uh, marker in case of a twin gestation. Nuchal translucency uh, itself has a detection rate of around 60 to 70 percent. If we uh, this is early in pregnancy and if we can identify the individual at high risk and make a diagnosis that the patient is carrying an aneuploid fetus which is incompatible with life, she can early go for a termination of pregnancy which is much safer. Now regarding the efficacy of these screening methods, see uh, the isolated marker if we take NT, 
it is a very useful method uh, and it has a detection rate of around 64 to 70 uh, percent and if we have this NT we can combined with the dual markers that is the beta HCG and the pap then the detection rate goes up to till 80 to 84 percent and if we combine the maternal age plus anti plus the dual markers then the efficacy goes even higher that is the detection rate is around 90 to 94 percent and in all these cases the false positive rate remains the same that is around 5 percent. Screening provides an individual's likelihood assessment of the risk for the fetal chromosomal abnormalities. So this was all about the screening in first trimester of pregnancy. If you liked my video, please do like, subscribe and share the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. Thanks for watching.